Well, I finally got irrigation. Let me show you how to irrigate an acre of fruit trees and fruit bushes for less than $200, and actually less than 100 if you take out the automation. Come join me in the chaos. Come join me in the chaos. Chaos gardening. Where the wildflowers bloom. Letting nature take the lead. In this beautiful community. So the first step is to get some of this. So this is distribution line. So it's half inch, rainbird. This stuff's on Amazon. It's like 35 bucks, not sponsored. So half inch drip tubing. This is basically like a hose and this distributes water throughout your property. And then once you have the water everywhere you want it, then you break off of this with smaller drip lines or you can actually put emitters straight into this line right here. All right, so this hose splitter, this is a four way hose splitter. So the, one of the zones I have going to my hose just in case I want to use it. And then I have three zones. And so basically what that means is I've ran distribution tubing the three different sections of my yard. So one of them runs through here, through my black raspberries and bush cherries, back this way through more black raspberries, goes along this way, along the fence, along all my blackberries, also stops here and waters all this stuff. All right, and then I have another zone coming through here to all these fruit trees, coming through these two strawberry patches. All right, so in summary, this is your first important thing, $34 a roll for 500 feet. You could probably also get a roll of this quarter inch stuff. I think the quarter inch stuff was like $20 for 200 feet or something. And I ordered a bunch of random stuff and I realized I didn't need most of it. Like I use these probably the most and these little T's are for splitting the distribution line. So like whenever I want to branch off on that stuff, I would use this stuff. So, I'll put a link to all this stuff in case you're interested in buying it. I get like 3% kickback on most things from the companies that make this stuff. So if you use my links, they give me like a quarter every time someone buys one of these things. It doesn't sound like much, but it kind of adds up. You're going to want these things too. So when you punch the hole with that purple hole punching tool I showed you, this slides perfectly into those holes which allows you to pass water from the half inch to that quarter inch line. Another thing you'll need is these guys. Um, these go on the half inch distribution line and these are super convenient because it just kind of um, kinks the ends of the half inch line so that it pressurizes itself. So it kind of just keeps the line pressurized. And then when you start poking holes in it, the water will just go through the little emitter holes so these are really convenient. Instead of using plugs, you just kind of put it through on one side and then put it through on the other side and it just creates a kink. So I used a lot of those, a lot of these. And there's a few other things that I used, but not very much. Like I bought these, but I never really used them. Um, oh, one of the most important things, I forgot to mention this. So you're gonna definitely want this. So this is an adapter. It allows you to use this half inch stuff, the, this really cheap half inch distribution line. This distribution line goes into this hole right here. And this kind of, this side right here actually connects to that little splitter, that hose splitter. Or and you can actually connect this directly to a hose. Like if you don't want to do something like this, you can literally just attach this to distribution line and then drag your hose over to that section of your yard and then just connect the hose to that section of your yard and then just have it all watered while it's connected to the hose like if you don't feel like doing all this stuff i actually ended up digging through my asphalt driveway so that i could just put this stuff in permanently and i mean it's so cheap like i said it's only 34 dollars for 500 feet of this stuff so to me it just made sense to just make it permanent you know, this entire section over here probably only cost me like $10 worth of distribution line. And now I can just leave it and then just get a few wheelbarrows full of mulch and cover up all the line. And then it should be good for five to 10 years. I don't know how long that distribution line lasts. I would guess at least 10 years. But again, if you do it all yourself, it's not really that expensive. So yeah, you're gonna want a pack of these. I think a pack of six of these. I don't know if you can buy them in packs of four. I just know I found a pack of six of them. 
and make sure they have the little seal in there because I actually did one of these without that seal and it was dripping water and I don't want any water going where I don't want water, especially near my house. Um, you probably know that if you have water dripping near your house, too much of it will pull and actually push into your house. So you don't want to do that. So make sure you have that little seal. And then, like I said, this, it just kind of slides on. And so this comes out and then you slide it in, slides over this. And then this puts pressure on it when it's slid over and it really seals it well. So there's no dripping, no leaking, nothing. So definitely want those. Um, oh yeah, and then I got a few different options for emitters. When you punch holes in your line, I use these two. I like these kind because I can adjust them. You can like twist the little head and you can either make it spray. I think when it's fully open, it's like two or three gallons per hour or something. And then you can dial it back to just drips and do much less. And I kind of dial them back to drips just because I have so many things going to so many different spots. And in Missouri, you don't really need that much water. And so I know it's going to sound strange, but I'm mostly doing it to keep my soil from drying out all the way because I have clay soil and I cover everything with mulch. So by keeping the mulch and the soil from completely drying out, it makes it way more absorbent. So when it does rain, which it does, but sometimes I'll go like a week or two with no rain, you'll just want to make sure that the soil doesn't dry out. Because I've noticed if my soil is completely dry and it rains, it's like hydrophobic, where it basically means the water kind of beads on top of it and it doesn't go in. But as long as the soil is just slightly damp, when it rains, it just sucks it up like a sponge. Especially if you have a ton of mulch, and I use tons of mulch. So, the drips are mostly to keep the mulch moist, which of course makes the plants happy, but I'm not dumping a large amount of water into my soil like you might guess. The, the purpose of these is to mostly keep the soil from drying out. And then of course it does deliver a little bit of water to the plants. Um, I like these ones because they stake and it keeps the lines from moving around. So I did mix a few of these in just to have that from because the lines, when you first uncoil them, they're really annoying and they're like a giant spring. And so it really helps to have that, um, that spike to kind of just like stretch them straight and unwind them. And then you can kind of use that to keep them from flipping around. And then these ones are really fast. So I would keep like a pocket full of these guys. And I got really fast with it where I just used that little purple thing, like a hole punch. And then um, just pop that right in. And I did it live, like I had the water pressure on because it's so much easier to punch holes in the distribution line when it's pressurized. Because when it's not, it just kind of squishes and it doesn't really poke very well. So yeah, pressurize the distribution line. Makes it so much easier. It'll spray you a little bit if you're standing in front of where, the, where it sprays. And then you just pop in whichever device you want. And if it's all the way open, it'll kind of spray you a little bit. But again, it doesn't, you know, it's, it's just so much faster just to have the line pressurized. So it has two functions. As you can see, this first one right here is a little cutter for cutting both the half inch distribution line and then also the quarter inch dri uh, drip line. You could also cut with that. And then this one right here is for actually punching perfect holes in the distribution line. And you can either just put emitters straight into the distribution line or you can run um, quarter inch tubing to wherever you want it. Since I ordered so much of this distribution line i just ran distribution line almost everywhere and then there's a few outlying spots where i just ran um drip line so like right here for example i have a little drip line in the middle of my distribution line in the middle of my strawberry patch but then i have a drip line that runs to that black raspberry so i have like a hedge of black raspberries over here and so the thought is is i'm going to have a bunch of black raspberries here I like to use these on the ends, like I was saying. And then if you pull this back, you can see that it's pressurized, it's full of water. So when you pull it back, and you slide this over it, it keeps that line pressurized. And then by having that line pressurized, all these emitters are set up so that they'll let a certain flow rate of water through each spot. So you want to have all those ends plugged off. And I suppose if I didn't feel like retrieving the hose and I wanted to water something close by, I could probably just pick that up and use it for a hose. But 
it, it, that's kind of just intended to work as a stopper. Just kinks the ends. And then when you have these tuned just the wrong way, they seem to whistle. That's the only annoying thing about them. So you can turn them up all the way like this if you want, or you can kind of dial them back. I like to have them so they're just not squeaking, and then they're just running a decent amount of water, maybe a little less than that. A fast drip, like, I don't know how many drops that is, maybe four or five drops a second. And so the main reason I did the irrigation, I mean, you don't really need it in Missouri, but I did notice I was getting less rapid growth. So I was looking at my fruit trees and I noticed in the summer months, since it was so hot, the I wouldn't have like two or three leaves that were a different color. You probably know what I'm talking about if you have fruit trees. You can tell when they're growing quickly because you'll have a bunch of light colored leaves on the apical tips. But in the summer, everything slows down because it's so hot. And so you wouldn't see that as much. And I noticed whenever I'd soak the ground near the fruit trees, you'd have a lot of that. So that's just so that I'm just getting more um, even watering kind of fun to just automate everything too because I would spend you know once a week I'd come out to each of these areas and spend an hour or even more just watering all the all the things so I'm hoping that automating all the stuff will make it take a lot less time and then yeah 500 feet of that distribution line is only 34 bucks on Amazon maybe 35 so it's really cheap imagine 500 feet of hose would probably cost you a lot more I think 100 feet of hose is like 100 bucks And when you want to punch a hole, you just have to think of where you want that hole to be. So I'm going to want this hole facing that way. And so you just kind of put the hose, the distribution line, where you want it. Make sure it's going to line up that puncher where you want the hole to be punched. And then you squeeze it, just like so. And then you have the water. But the cool thing is, when you take this thing off, see if it does it. Sometimes it does it, sometimes it doesn't. Well, most of the time when I do it, it's barely spraying. This time it's spraying a little bit more, but it's not spraying toward me, so it's not a big deal. And then my pre-prepared drip line, I put this guy on this side, and then my dripper on that side, and I just shove this guy in, kind of like a drink box, into that hole. I don't know if I can do this with one hand. So my daughter and my wife both bought me um, tripods to hold my phone, and I just never bother. So one of them's probably gonna say something to me. But anyway, shove that in like a drink box, might take both hands, and then just run that where you want it. And then run it next to where the blackberry vine is, right there. And see how easy that just pushes in? Well, make sure your blackberries are growing as fast as you want them to grow or maybe even faster some of them get a little crazy all right and if you're one of the types that's curious about automation so this is the timers i just got these things are only like 17 dollars on amazon not sponsored but if you use my link they give me like a quarter or something if someone buys one Has some of this Teflon tape, which is pretty useful. I don't really use those quick disconnects. So it's a pretty basic system, pretty easy to program. It doesn't come with batteries, but I have some rechargeable ones I'm gonna put in here. I like this because it has a seal on it, so you don't have to worry about it getting all wet. Let me put batteries in here. Okay. And like magic, I have batteries in. Let me just kind of shove it in. Oops, went the wrong way. Yep. All right. And then when you power it, it boots up or something. But they're really easy to program. All right. So right now it's off. You basically can go through this. Um, setup and just program it so 24 hours probably do 12 hours because that's what I'm used to um, you can toggle it like this until the next thing until the time 6 
35. Once you got the six, you gotta press okay. 35. Oh, and I've had a few people ask me about this scar randomly, just a gardening accident. My um, hoary hoary knife. I filleted the side of my finger. Super glued it back on. Nice little scar. All right, so time is now set. Let's make one of the next thing. Start time. That's just asking you what time do you want your sprinkler to turn on. I like doing these in the, at night when I'm sleeping. So I think my other one is set for like four. Another one's five. So I'll either do it at three or six. Maybe I'll do it at three in the morning. So, 3 a.m., so that's when it's going to start, and then the next thing's going to ask you, well, how long do you want it to go for? So I can tell it however long I want. So I can do it for 10 minutes. So right now it's on hours. I don't want it to go for hours. Minutes, I'll probably do 20 minutes. 20 minutes. a day you can do it every 12 hours you can do it less than that or probably just do it once a day so once a day it'll fire on at the start time that I programmed it for and then you just turn it on and it'll just now automatically next time it's 3 a.m. it'll fire on for however long I told it to go 20 minutes just make sure you leave it to on if you ever don't want it to go, you can either press the delay button and tell it how long you want it to not water for, or you can just turn it off. So if you rotate it to off, it just won't do anything until you turn it back on. So like for example, when it gets to winter time, I'll probably just take all this stuff off and put it in the house just so it doesn't get weather damaged. But if you wanted to, and you didn't get deep frost, that would might cause damage to the parts of these. So. If, I've had people that like complain about how these things leak and I have this feeling that it's probably because they leave things, these things out during the winter and then the water expands inside of these things and busts them up and then breaks them and then they leak the next, the next spring when they actually fire them up again. So I would recommend not having water be in these things when they're exposed to cold temperatures or better yet, just don't leave them outside during the winter. But anyway, that's how you make these little, uh, timers work if you didn't know how to do that and I hope if you already know how to do that you didn't you know just watch this for nothing I'm just kidding <laughs> um, and I'll have links to this stuff like I said this one's only $16 right now it's on sale um, if you have any questions just leave comments down and if needed I'll make another video about it or I'll just answer your question um, I think it's pretty straightforward so hopefully I'm not just repeating myself and just boring the heck out of everyone and if I am just double speed through this